wonder how Ida's doing there. Oh, I'm sure he's just doing fine, you know? <laughs> Following the instructions of his, uh, mentor. Not going into dark alleys. You know, walking like this. <laughs> It'll be fine, he said. Low-level villains, he said. <laughs> Everyone, please, remain calm. Return to your seats. <laughs> yeah, keep calm, you know, no big deal. Your Just a bunch of sure nomus flying around. Look at this guy, <laughs> giving orders. Who is this kid? What is he doing in the city? No time for detours or stairs. Gotta put my training to the test. Become the egg. I feel like that ending scene we've seen before where he's talking about how this is the story of how I become the ultimate hero. That could happen right now. I've totally got this. <laughs> I love how he's enjoying it in the meantime. Please be okay. Pretty badass. Hero killer, Stain versus UA students. This should be good. I've been waiting for this. They're busy with their internships at the moment. Stop it, you stupid beast! I was looking for the elusive hero killer. But this thing will have to do. Thanks, Who is it? Timer. Oh, is it Endeavor? But I can handle this from here Whoa. on. Whoa! I came because I'm a hero. All right, Endeavor. You got it. You dug yourself a huge hole. <laughs> Add some points. Start digging your way out of it, I guess. Do some good. You won't just be Gran Torino in trouble, but the entire city. That includes Ida. He's interning here. Especially Ida. Crap, what do I do? Come on, think. How do I be the best possible hero right now? <laughs> oh, no. It's so... It's just so much, but it's so like, it's so great. Deku has a way of like, just getting to me with these one-liners. <laughs> it's so funny with the show because it walks this interesting line where moments like this run the risk of being cliche, but they're not. You know what I mean? Like they actually are, are really heartfelt. Like I feel them. It could be mistaken for just token heroism, token goodness, but to me it, it feels authentic. What I like about this, for example, is like, imagine substituting the heroism element of it for like, what is the best thing I could be doing right now? It sounds kind of simple to say it out loud, but like the sentiment to me is is right. And it's way, way harder to actually do that than it is to say that. But as just a, an idea, you know, or as a guiding principle of some sort, even if it's very simple, to me, it's nice. Like, okay, what would be the best thing I could be doing at this moment? Or what would be the most heroic response to this? And a lot of times that requires incredible difficulty to get through like immediate desires or immediate fears or something like that. At times when I look really closely at myself, Sometimes I notice that the things I strongly desire or the things I feel an impulse to do do not necessarily align with like what feels right and actually act in accordance with those things, you know, like the things that just feel good, feel pure, let's say. While it's really rewarding, it's also really difficult at times. What I wonder and maybe worry about for, for Deku and I guess All Might is that a lot of times I feel like the, the answer is to either do nothing or to focus on oneself more, right? Like to clear away one's own like issues or baggage or something. But there's been this idea of meddling mentioned. And so I'm wondering if those risks will come up, if that makes sense. Where are you, Tanya? Is that fish guy? That was a very serendipitous alleyway crossing. This is insane. The last villain attack was at least localized to Universal Studios, right? This is just, this is an incident. This is a pretty, pretty big deal. Class UA about to make a name for themselves. Got it. That's manual. <laughs> you know the normal hero. That, is that his name? Where the hell are you, Tanya? I don't know if that's any better than Fish Guy, to be honest. Wait, he went off alone? Despite what's happening? That doesn't sound like something he'd do. Yeah, he's not really himself right now. Ooh, this is a tough choice for Decker too, because do you stay in help or do you look for Tanya? Ida. Yeah. Hosu. Where the hero killer attacked. Yeah. Don't tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch out, boy! <laughs> Oh my god. Crap. Did that just happen? Are these really men? Or are they actual monsters? They got DNA. Bird DNA, I guess. Master, how many no more completed? I finished adjusting the behavior of six of them. Though they are not as strong as the one from the USJ attack. That's useful information. It's my right to destroy anything that I don't like, right? Master? Very well. I wonder what these villains' goals are with Shigaraki. They obviously see a lot of potential in him, but what do they want from him? I am the brother of an incredible hero who you attacked. He's the best older brother that anyone could hope for. <laughs> so endearing, but so inappropriately timed. Mortensei! Jenny 
you. No, but he can stop so him. So your brothers. I let him live so he could spread the good word. Let him live. That is one interesting thing about Stain so far, and this adds to that. He's messed up. Like, his principles don't. I don't know what they are, I just know they don't make sense already. But he doesn't kill indiscriminately. He's not lying about having a code and having principles. It's just that they're gonna be extremely flawed. You aren't heroes. You have no right to be called that. Both of you are nothing but fakes. Shut up. How so? You've become independent at a very young age with many psychics following you. That's no easy feat in these times. Nah. They're not followers. It's the opposite, Dad. They support me because I'm not great on my own. And humble, too. It just gets better and better. I'm not super talented or anything. But if I'm going to call myself a hero, then I have to live up to that title and help people. He is my hero. Yeah, I mean, not hard to see why. He's like the ultimate man. <laughs> I'm fanboying over Ingenium now. The old Shouldn't Ingenium. You be worried about saving that guy? Forgot that guy, Ingenium. <laughs> and Ida. Completely blinded by a selfish desire for revenge. You're mm -hmm. about as far away from being a hero as I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Oh, does he stop them after, like, using their blood somehow? Knowing you look up to me makes me better. I have to, <laughs> to make you proud. <laughs> Ultimate man. Get him, Deku. There you go. And this time he announced it after the punch. <laughs> He's learning. <laughs> the ultimate hero. How? Already in season two. I'm gonna save you. Hell yeah. That was a very satisfying <laughs> punch. I really would love to hear Stain's full philosophy, like, fleshed out. There is something true about what he said there. Ida is acting out of vengeance right now. He would do things that are sort of gray area morality out of a desire for revenge, out of rage. So in this moment, he has the capacity for certain villain-like elements. Though, like, personally, my gut tells me that Ido actually wouldn't push it very far just because he clearly has been brought up in a way where he's internalized a lot of these things pretty deeply. Like, look at why he loved his brother so much. He was listening to his brother talk about being good for others and showing humility and showing respect and showing appreciation for his little brother. You know, Ida maybe could get pretty far down that path, but I feel like he would stop before he did something irreversible. I don't feel like he's a killer. Nevertheless, he's not thinking clearly. It's not really the heroism that I was just talking about with Deku, right? Where it's like, you do the thing you feel is right and you don't do the things you feel are wrong, even if that's really difficult and counter to your, your most severe impulses. But then Stain, like, is it a whole new level of hypocrisy where because he notices negative traits in others, he's the ultimate arbiter of justice, and that justifies, like, killing Ida. Huge villainous stretch there. But for a number of reasons, Deku's arrival is, is amazing. It feels great. It's perfect. It saves Ida. It also pulls him back from the brink, in a sense. And it gives Deku the chance to be there for Ida, which is sort of what he was looking for, which just feels good. The hero killer is probably somewhere in this city this very moment. I really like that he went after Ida. I can't really explain it. It just makes me feel good. That choice. <sighs> It feels like localized and personal in the right way, you know what I mean? Like caring for a friend. For me that has more resonance. Most of his victims were found where there weren't many people. So in order to find you, alleyways, man. Search far away from the panic. Alleyways give him strength. I can't move my body. It must be his quirk. Yeah, he's beat up pretty bad. Oh yeah, and the the blood paralysis thing. Blood bending? Is that what this is? There's someone else! Oh yeah, this this person <laughs> that I keep forgetting about. Don't get involved. This doesn't have anything to do with you. You have no right. You have no right to say that at this point. He's different from the villains who attacked us before. Those are the eyes of a fanatic. He believes in what he's doing, for sure. Stand down. Run away. You have no right. <laughs> All Might was right, though. Meddling when you don't need to is the essence of being a hero. There's that meddling thing. I was just thinking about that. But this doesn't feel like meddling in the way I'd feared. This feels right. Like, Ida's a close friend in need of help. And Deku's doing this, like, of his own choice, you know? He's gone. He's not asking for anything. This a is just where his heart is leading him. The there you go. <laughs> he's flying around. Yeah, no, he's learning so fast. It's crazy. All those living room battles at Gran Torino's house really came in clutch. It is some kind of bloodbending. Very interesting. Did he cut me and I didn't even notice? One graze is all it took. Time to channel the the spirits of all for one Christmas past. Get away! 
someone else to get in my way. Today's been full of distractions. <gasps> Whoa! Damn, everyone's here now. All right, so they gave us Todoroki, and that feels damn good. Would it be too much to ask for for Bakugo next? <laughs> Can we just get all of Class One, One A here, please? Thanks. A little Uraka, a little uh, Tokoyami. Just for a minute, let's forget about the city. Let's forget about the Nomus. Let's forget about this random hero who's slowly bleeding out in the alleyway. Let's just come together and kick, <laughs> kick this guy's ass <laughs> as a team. I was almost too late to stop this guy. <laughs> You too, Todoroki? I'm you get here? very excited Hold to see Todoroki on. fight right now. You're using your left side? Stakes are, are too high to, for that to matter. You're just what they said you were. <laughs> but you won't be taking any more lives. He looks like he aged like 10 years in the last week. In terms of his maturity and stature. That was quite the internship he had with Endeavor. All I've gotta do is keep my distance. <laughs> oh, and he's got projectiles. <laughs> nice. There you go. Live up to your reputation, Todoroki. This fight is with me. You have no right. <laughs> I'm the one that should stop him. No, no, the no. The hero killer is mine. No, the no. Ingenium now? Strange. The Ingenium I knew before never had that look on his face. Correct. You've got a dark side. Guess my family isn't the only one. I feel like he's qualified to say that, seeing as he's been dealing with his dark side very extensively recently. This is something I've been thinking about a lot actually recently. These days, and actually partly because of inspiration from watching the show, I've added workouts to my like daily routine, which I do on YouTube. And one day my workout finished and it auto played into the Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary, Pumping Iron, a particular segment of it in which Arnold was saying that the real gains for muscle happen at the most painful reps, like towards the end of your set. It's the final like three, four, really intense, difficult, painful, grueling reps that build muscle. The rest is just sort of warm up. And he went on to say that the reason why people generally can't build muscle like he can build muscle or why pros can build muscle is because most people can't tolerate pain. They stop before they get to that pain point in which they're experiencing maximum growth. And I thought that's such a good metaphor for so many things, even outside of physical training, like emotional things as well, you know, like to go through something like Todoroki's going through you have to sort of accept that pain period. You gotta be comfortable going into the darkness, sort of. Having the resilience and the faith that you can get through it and having the determination to get something out of it and not shrink away from that challenge. That's part of what's so great about Todoroki's journey right now is that you can see him, starting with his battle with Deku, accepting that I'm about to go through hell. Because I gotta go way back, way deeply into these things that were like so traumatic for me. But he makes the decision to face it. And then initially knocks him on his ass, right? But that begins the process where now already you can see he has a kind of a renewed sense of conviction. But most people can't live in that state. Most people can't go into that pain willingly with a, with a focused vision of what they're going to get out of it. You know, to like accept bitter truths about themselves and to let go of self-image enough to have like a breakdown, to build yourself back up better, to do difficult work, to take responsibility for things, you know, without blame, without blaming circumstances or people in our past or, you know, whatever. A lot of the time that's where growth happens, at least for me, you know, in that point of pain, the right kind of pain and having the willingness and focus to you know, go through the fire, the purifying fire, and come out the other side better than you were. Oh, you can move. And, you know, because of this, it feels better to root for Todoroki, you know what I mean? You. It's easier to get behind him, because you know what he's been through. And it feels sincere. You're good, kid. Unlike him. Watch out. Oh yeah, this, uh, this hero's still here. It must be type O. Type O? It's a blood type thing. But I was the one freed first. I've got three different guesses why. <laughs> I'll bet you do. <laughs> Very impressive. Hero killer stain. His quirk, blood curdle. Interesting blood timing of that card. Blood, he can freeze them for up to eight minutes, depending on their blood type. From shortest to longest time, it's O, A, A, B, and B. It doesn't really help us that much to know how his quirk works, though. Did they hear that? <laughs> I want to believe that this card and voice just happens for all of them. <laughs> like... They all experience what we just experienced. Who knows? Maybe that's a quirk, you know? Title card quirk. It could it could happen. <laughs> I'll distract him while you support me from behind. Sound like a plan? You want us to take a pretty big risk. Yes. Do it. You got this. You guys are ready. And their heart's in the right place, too. Unlike Ida. Ida. Take a good look, Ida. I've been worried about you ever since your brother was attacked. I recognize the face also of cared. someone who's that's drowning nice. in resentment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. He's He's been in this recently. He's gotten down there. That day. Wow. I told her about my life with father and about who I have become. She forgave me. There's nothing to forgive from you. I haven't forgiven him. I doubt I ever truly will. But I chose him. This is so amazing. I had to know. Wow. 
This is so beautiful, honestly. Speaking of avatar parallels, right? Like it makes me think of one of my favorite things from that show, which is the, you know, the idea of a true heart can withstand the the poison of hatred without being harmed or without being corrupted or whatever it is. I've never gotten that quote straight, <laughs> but it still resonates with me in my heart. It feels like Todoroki has found something more resilient in himself. It's a strong desire that he has and a belief that steers him. And it's powerful enough and pure enough that he can make difficult choices and actually maybe in some ways put himself in jeopardy while also preserving it. So he can actually go into a relationship with Endeavor somewhat clear-minded, clear-eyed. And because of that, because he's less burdened by like the hatred and whatever, he actually might come away with real insights and real closure on the situation. I've had a bunch of moments like this in the past where I, I've carried like deep resentment. It was never really solved by me like confronting someone or having it out with them or like laying out all my, my baggage to them. It always was resolved first by like a realization I had about a story I was telling myself about myself based on that history. Maybe my own worth or maybe a feeling of helplessness that was a risk for me going forward, you know, or whatever the story was. And then with a better understanding of what was going on and not necessarily ex accepting it, but sort of acknowledging it. And then going back and being with those people, I see it in a totally different way. And the the toxicity of it is is gone. And then I see the situation as the other person being flawed and it being their journey and their burden to carry, not mine, if that makes sense. And that's opened up all sorts of interesting doors for me and has made me be able to go back into relationships and things that I never wanted to enter again or never thought I could ever have a harmonious thing in again and do so in a way that was like really like wholesome for me and provided the closure I needed in some ways. So I admire the hell out of Todoroki for like the first step and hardest step. And I think in many ways, the most amazing step is just accepting that that task in the fight with Deku. Credit to Deku too, of course, where he's like, this is my quirk, right? Representing the fact that it's now his responsibility to make his life what he, what he wants it to be. And from there, he has freedom to go explore these, these niches while holding on to like that vision. And so he can face his mother courageously and he can use that experience to build momentum and face his father courageously, you know? And so it's just so cool to watch. I feel like it's the opposite of what often happens where it's like blame, you know, and resentment, which in many ways is like a, a mask or, or a thin shield for like self-hatred or self-disdain. My old man is a scumbag. But a scumbag with the judgment and instincts of a number two hero. Take what you can, can, I guess, right? That. Yeah. It's yours! Your quirk, not his! But the fact that he can see it means he was ready for it. I can't watch this. You have no right. <laughs> you want to make your brother proud? Stand up and be ingenium. Become the hero he wanted you to be! This is like a, a chain of inspiration from Deku to Todoroki to Ida. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Yes. <laughs> Damn, that was a good episode. Makes me feel so good. I feel like a lot of it starts with just them being good people. You know, like they have the the right mentality where they're flawed, they're young, they're inexperienced, they make mistakes, but they have pretty decent goals. You know, it's like, I want to be the strongest person I can be. I want to make the world a better place. And these things all have their perils, of course, but that's something for them to figure out with experience. Like the, the root intent to me feels good. It feels pure. And all things sort of flow from that. You know, like... Then they complement each other so well because they each have different insights that they can apply to each other. And again, because they have the right values, they're also each receptive of the other's things because they're all sort of on the same page in, in certain key ways. This episode is such a good payoff, man. Like, it's what I thought it would be with the tournament sort of building certain key things in, in terms of personality. And then like them being extra badass coming together for the, the villain arc. That's so true of this episode. It's so true of Todoroki. The Todoroki thing, the arc happened pretty quickly, I think. And it's still going, you know, but it's very satisfying. It's something that is personally very meaningful to me. Like one of the most meaningful things to me is the idea of taking responsibility for for our own feelings sort of letting go of like safeguard mechanisms that are easy like blame excuses and even though it's it's really difficult to just sort of take responsibility for most of our lives starting at whatever point that is like all right no one's coming to rescue me right like no one else is here if i'm lucky enough like these kids are I'll have help from friends and, friends and family and people i care about and who care about me but ultimately the, at the end of the day my being is my own and that includes like my actions, obviously, but you know, maybe less obviously, the way I process information, the way I try to think about things, the way I internalize events. There are a lot of things that are outside of my control, of course, you know, the circumstances of life and what other people are doing and just random chance, but all of that stuff has to come in at some point, right? Through my my own lens. And that's where my responsibility kicks in. And then like what else I put back out into the world. So when I look at these kids, 
doing that, even though it might on some level feel like an obvious thing, like I've, I've spoken about in this show, where it's like, yeah, we're heroic, right? Yeah, yeah, it's obvious, but it's hard, and it's not common enough, and because it's real, and because I want more of that, it makes me feel good to see. Part of it's wishful thinking, too, I guess, you know, like, I want to believe that you get rewarded for it, you know, that you get rewarded for going into the darkness, or going into the fire with an open heart, and like a belief that you can make it to the other side. It makes me feel like I have more to live for, and it also brings certain meaning and joy, even, to challenges to some of the most difficult challenges. It's like, back to Avatar, in the darkest times, hope is something you give yourself. It's that similar feeling. It's like, oh, here's something that's insanely difficult. There's so much turbulence in my life right now, um, for example. What is it pointing to? Like, what's the opportunity? And like, how do I show up in it? Do I shrink and fall into despair or bitterness or whatever? Or do I like accept the challenge and try to learn from it and try to come out the other side better than I started, you know? Just framing it that way, even though it, it's a subtle thing, to me, it just opens up a huge door that I love. But yeah, this was one of my favorite episodes in a while, and this arc is not over. Very excited to see where this goes.